Driver Karen Jordan has to overcome her fears. I had probably two or three in the, in like a couple of weeks beforehand where I had them pretend to, to jump. And Brian has trouble at London Bridge. Call the old building. All right, come here. Come here. Last year, more than 50 people threw themselves under tube trains. The staff at London Underground call it a one under, and they have to deal with the fallout. Today, a suicide attempt at Earl's Court is causing severe problems in the control room for operations manager Trevor Edmead. This afternoon at 20 past two, we had a person fall under one of our trains in Earl's Court platform four. Uh, fortunately for the person concerned, she was extricated alive, but she suffered major injuries as a result of it. The emergency services have left, and now Trevor has to sort out the delay. The incident has left the service in chaos in the build-up to rush hour. What's the late running like at the moment? Yeah. As you'd expect after one under. Yeah, about half an hour, Steve, what's the gap between the last eastbound and that one coming up to Putney Bridge? Person under a train, you don't know what it is you're going into until you actually arrive at the site and see what it is that you're dealing with. We found a female in her 30s. Uh, we found her sitting upright between the train and the cable bump. She'd uh, lost her right foot and her left index finger was missing. She was in quite a lot of discomfort. We could see that she was in shock. We applied a tourniquet to her right thigh to stem the bleeding and we made her as comfortable as we possibly could. Although the victim wasn't killed by the impact of the train, she was still in danger of electrocution. The priority is to switch the current off as quickly as possible. That's, that's the only chance that the person's going to have if they're, if they're there, if they are actually being um, electrocuted at the time. Right, Ray, what's the late running like at Barking? Absolutely horrendous on the ice. No, it's not a surprise because half of those were turned back at West, uh, South Cam, weren't they? More than half of the people who try to kill themselves under a tube train survive. Those who attempt suicide at stations with pits under the rails are much less likely to die. You pulling that one back at Mansion House? Thank you. How many did you cancel from uh, the depots? What's that? From each depot? Four out of, I think so three out of each. Right. We're going to end up with about 69 trains in service. I should have 76 trains in service, but obviously because of the knock-on effect that the incident we've had earlier on today has had on the railway, that's not going to be possible. So we just have to make do with what we got. The highest number of one-unders happens at the two busiest stations on the network, Victoria and King's Cross. They're less common at London Bridge. But station supervisor Brian Valentine has witnessed two in his 28 years on the tube. One that jumped under me was a man, and the other one was a young woman, 32. Um, as the supervisor, I had to deal with that one. As the driver, I mean, so if somebody else dealt with that, I just sat in the cabinet. But, and I was a lot younger then. Both of them affected me. The driver one affected me more. It's, True that you can get used to this kind of thing, but it still affects you. One unders might be an occupational hazard for staff, but thankfully, most passengers will never witness one. For your own safety, customers are advised to stand behind the yellow line marked on the platform floor. Your next northbound train is for all stations to High Park. He's very good on this PA and he calms the customers down. If there's a bit of a gap in the service, you won't see any frowns or arguments or anything, you'll keep them happy. Hello, Darren. Oh, all right, son. <laughs> Ticket inspector Darren Smith covers the Jubilee and Northern lines. Today, he's looking for fare evaders at London Bridge. Yes. 
You looking forward to today, are you? Oh, yeah, mate. Yeah, I'm mate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you want us to do whatever, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Just keep it out of the way. No, keep in the way. Oh, lads, 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 lads. Lads, lads, lads. Darren has barely arrived when there's an incident between two commuters. I know, I know, son. I'm, but you don't need this before work, do you? He punched me first, yeah. It's a bit of pushing and shoving to get me through. I pushed you. Did you punch me or not? No, I've got knuckles in my back. Well, I pushed that, right? It was a commuter rage, OK? Everyone's trying to get to work. They're banging into each other. You're in a rush. You're in the rat race, you know? They just needed to take a chill pill, do you know what I mean, and see the light. Yeah. Moments later, Brian discovers a young man with an invalid ticket who doesn't seem to speak English. Um, he's got his own two weekly, yeah. no photo card. Right. No, he's just produced a photo card, right? Ah. Excuse me. Wait. Right. Don't start running away, right. Sonny Jim. Come back here. He's Come just here. produced a photo card, right. right? Don't run. Can you speak English? I asked him for a photo card, and he said didn't have one. Then he goes out and I said, I keep card. Right. Uh, uh, uh. No, 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 no. No, the numbers here don't correspond with that. Don't. Right, right, Keep hold of him in the box. Call the old building. All right, come here, come here. Uh, this young man here is presenting himself to the barrier with a Zone 2 travel card and no, <coughs> no photo card. We're in Zone 1 anyway. He's now produced a photo card, which I believe is different to the ticket he's got. He's now produced another ticket and he's also tried to run away. The police are on their way and uh, hopefully deal with this chap. Do you want to bring him in the mess room? I think he might freak out a little bit, Brian. Well, that's all right, we can handle him. I've got a feeling he's going to do a run, and I don't want to start chasing people and rolling around on the floor with them. No, I do. <laughs> As the wind blows, your train approaches. Do you feel the wind? Darren is still struggling, but one of his colleagues has hidden talents. Do you speak Cantonese? Cantonese? You speak? He doesn't speak any Cantonese, so he knows a bit of Mandarin. He doesn't speak any Cantonese, so he knows a bit of Mandarin. Oh, yeah. <coughs> oh, here's the police now. <laughs> Hello. Right, OK, um, we've got this Chinese guy. Um, he did try to make a runner from us. Um, I didn't want to end up rolling around on the floor with the fella. It's coming. All stations to high bar. After giving it some fault, I've just decided that like, this guy is going to be freaked out enough and he's genuinely scared now because the police have turned up. And to be perfectly honest, I just think that's enough. So I'm just going to charge him the fare that he should have paid today from the Elephant and Castle, which is £1.90. And, uh, and I think he's learnt his lesson today and it won't happen again. Unfortunately, he didn't speak a dicky bird of English, so... Uh... Well, a little Mandarin I know, I sort of had a word with him and it turns out he was trying to go to Brighton, coming from Elephant and Castle, and I think he was just probably a little bit scared because he had a few staff around and not really speaking much English, so he, that's why he might have tried to run. I had a, a bit of a thing for all things Chinese when I was younger, you know, just the movies and the food, the culture, that sort of thing. Watching lots of badly dubbed Kung Fu movies, basically, and just picked up a little bit of language along the way. It's not a big deal. There's a figure of £30 million banded about is what we're losing revenue. There's a few good pay rises in £30 million quid, isn't there? I think at this station we take £12 million a year. At Earl's Court, it's three hours since the suicide attempt and the district line is gradually getting back to normal. That's all right. Uh, we had seven cancel for the 1800. I'm still up in the control room. Uh, yeah, and we had one for uh, vandalism. OK, John. Bye. The third of the service is virtually right time and in place. And a little bit more tweaking, within another hour we should be OK. So, what's your late running like at the moment, apart from crack? It's about 15 both rows. 15 both rows. Works for me, mate. Well done. Jeff, 15 both. Our plan is working. 
I gave the all clear on the internet at seven minutes past three and uh, 90 minutes later we're still late running. Uh, it still takes a concerted effort by all service control staff concerned to get the service back right time. At Golders Green on the Northern Line, train manager Ken Gibbard has a driver returning to work today after a one under. You come in at one o'clock, mate. Yeah. Because, uh, oh, I mean, there's okay, a. Lovely. If, if we need to. Well, we've got to, we've got to have a chat okay. with you first, anyway. Um, and then we can get that out of the way. How, how's the nipper, anyway? Yeah. All right, then. We'll see you at one ish, yeah? Okay, then, mate. See you later. Bye. She sounded okay. Sounded okay. So fingers crossed. Um, get her over the uh, area and, and see how she reacts to that. And as I say, yeah, fingers crossed. It's Karen Jordan's first day back. She's been off work for the last three months since someone tried to kill themselves by jumping under her train. Um, well, May the 23rd, um, I had someone try and commit suicide. I'd only been on the train about an hour and um, he'd just done it. The man was standing next to his wife on the platform at South Wimbledon when he jumped. Right, um, well, he was, but... Um, um, what we're going to do is Karen's going to go with an instructor operator uh, for two days, get her confidence back. And then what we'll start is a gradual build-up process over the next three days. We'll start carrying off with Edgware and back, then Kennetons and back, and then finally the full circuit so that she's got her confidence back and she can pick up her duties. Not only has Karen had to deal with the suicide attempt, but a month ago her father died. Today she'll be accompanied in the cab. Some of the time I'll be driving and some of the time the instructor will be driving. It's just purely first day back get you back on a train and also with someone just to try and get your confidence built up a bit. Operator instructor Kevin Fitzgerald will be helping Karen rebuild her confidence. We'll be going through South Wimbledon where she had the one under and she doesn't actually want to drive through there so I, today I'll be driving through and she'll just be on the front observing to see if you know, anything comes back, any memories or... Some people could literally be straight back on the train, have no effect. Um, and others, yeah, unfortunately, it's... I mean, I have known people that they've just been unable to drive a train again. Karen's partner, Dan, is also a train driver who works at Golders Green. So obviously, it's the first time she's been in front of a train for a long time. And uh, you, never, you never know how you're going to feel until you actually sit in the, in the hot chair and start playing with the controls and getting on with it. It was easier to talk to him after the incident than it would have been if he was, say, a bank manager, because in, in you know, most normal jobs, you don't have that associated hazard of, of, of people who do try and commit suicide. I'm sure she'll be OK. She's a strong girl, good girl, so she'll be all right. Oh, my God, it is, isn't it? Come on, girl. Although Karen received trauma counselling from London Underground's therapy unit, she's got no idea how she'll react being in the cab again. You nervous? I'm actually. Yeah. Coming up to the afternoon, it's heading towards the evening peak, and you know the platforms are going to start getting busy, and I think that's going to be the most worrying thing when you've got people on the, yeah. the edge of the platform where it's busy. See how I get on. Just play it by ear, just you know. You don't want to drive just say, it's okay. Before I had that thing, um, I had probably two or three in the, it, like a couple of weeks beforehand where I had them pretend to, to jump, yeah. you know, a group of lads. And it really unnerved me then, it was almost like building up to it. Weird.
Karen will have to put past events behind her if she's to return to Golders Green as a train driver. Today, Karen Jordan is driving a Northern Line train for the first time in three months. She'll have to travel through South Wimbledon Station, where someone tried to kill themselves under her train. The first part of Karen's journey is overground, but it's in the tunnels that she could begin to relive events. It felt like it wasn't happening, but it was such a shock and it was so quick that my first reaction was I just screamed. He didn't actually go under the train. I hit him back onto the platform at um, South Wimbledon. Whatever their problems are, they've involved you, and they've directly involved you. You, you know, you don't know who the person is, you've never seen them in your life, and then all of a sudden you become part of their problems. When somebody jumps under a train in order to commit suicide, that's what they think they're doing, and they are jumping under a train. But what they don't take into account is that somebody's actually driving that train and can see them and feel the bump as they go over them. And they don't realise the uh, after effects of the people that have to deal with it. Didn't have any problems, did you? No. No, so far so good. Yes, yeah. Everything went all right. It's like riding a bike, isn't it? Yeah, a bit hairy down where the, I had the incident that Kevin drove through there. So, oh, all right, please, that bit's over. Karen's first day back is over, but by the end of this week, Karen's boss will want to know if she's ready to come back full time. At London Bridge, they might take over £12 million in revenue a year, but Darren Smith and the other ticket inspectors are still trying to stem the tide of fare evasion. We're just, uh, we're just fishing at the moment, waiting for, a, waiting for a catch. You can sit there for three hours and not catch a thing. And then all of a sudden, you're just getting bite after bite after bite after bite. I'll come over there to you. Would that police officer like to stay with him? Cheers. Right, we've got a bloke who's doubled up on the gate line on the other side of the station. Unfortunately for him, he's doubled up behind a police officer. So I'm now going to go over there and take some details off of him. Borough oh. High Street, we've got somebody who's doubled up behind a police officer over there. Do you want a deal? Police officer? Yeah, he's doubled up behind a cop and the cop is with him over there now. Uh, Borough High Street. Doubling up, as it's known, involves pushing in behind a fare-paying passenger as they pass through the ticket barrier. Okay. How old are you, mate? Seventeen. Seventeen. What's your date of birth? Nineteen twenty-three. You asked my date of birth, right? Yep. And I said. 19. At the moment, he can't make up his mind whether he's sixteen or seventeen, and what year is his date of birth. But as he hasn't actually made a journey yet, although he didn't intend to pay for a journey, uh, and he intended to make that journey because of his age, I think he's just going to give him a lecture and send him on his way. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, right? All right, on this occasion, I'm going to let you out, OK? And then you're going to have to uh, find your own way to Seven Sisters. But you're not using the underground today, mate. OK, you're going to have to get a bus, walk, jog, run, whatever. All right, guys. He's been lucky. He could have been fined up to £1,000. What we're going to do now is we're going to show you exactly how a punt will double through, OK? And what I'll do is I'll pretend I've got a ticket, because this is what they generally do, have a ticket that doesn't exist. Go for it then. Wait, come back here. You must have heard that. Didn't frighten you, did I, mate? No. <laughs> the fact that he hasn't, he hasn't got a pot on him means that um, wherever he's going, Seven Sisters, which is about 12 miles from here, that geezer's got a long walk and he should be owned by uh, tea time. It's been a difficult few days for Karen, getting used to driving a train again. 
Karen initially felt okay when she was with Kevin uh, the first two days. She didn't seem to have any problems. Uh, and following that, we then put her out on a train on her own, and she still seemed okay. It wasn't until she'd done, I think it was the third day on her own when she did a full duty, that's when I think it hit her. And she's telling us that she doesn't feel that at this moment in time, she, she's in the right frame of mind to be a train operator. The Wednesday wasn't too bad because I was just doing runs up to Edgeware, which is all in the open, so that wasn't too bad. The Thursday I was in the tunnel a bit more and that's, I started to feel a bit panicky then. The Friday we were doing the full line on my own and, and going back through South Wimbledon, which is where the incident was. Uh, it just totally, totally threw me. Every station she came into, she was apprehensive that the people on the platform were going to throw themselves in front of their train. I think what really worried me the most was, especially like last week, was I just thought, what if I had another one? And everybody I looked at near the edge of the platform, I thought, oh, don't tell me they're going to do something as well. And I just could not get it out of my mind. So you're coming off the train, sir? I'm coming off to be a part-time station assistant oh, for a part year. Part-time? Just mm -hmm. 20 or 25 hours a week. So it's just, I wasn't confident driving. Yeah. And I just think I need a bit of time away from the trains, just to get my confidence back in. But it is hard. It's hard, speak. so... It's a big difference in, in wages going down to part-time station assistant, so it's not a decision you take lightly. The actions of one person on that day has totally turned my world upside down. So, how are you feeling at the moment, mate? Like a weight's been lifted. No. Light at the end of the tunnel, yeah? Yes, definitely. Definitely. The only real healer is, is time. And, and in this business, we haven't got the time, unfortunately. I just thought maybe for me, I think just a year away from the trains will be, you know, what I need to get, get my confidence back. Next time, there's chaos on the trains. Well, it looks like rush hour on the Northern Line has been cancelled. And an expert gets called out to Earl's Court to fix a broken train. Oh, yeah. The way that you fix most things, just hit it.